This is an A-level IB biology video, all to do with epistasis. Now, people don't like this. This forms part of the genetics topic, but I promise after this video, I'll be able to unpick all your difficulties and we will go through some past paper questions to make sure you understand what's going on. The first essential thing is that we look at the definition of epistasis. So I stated that here. Epistasis is when the expression of one gene masks or affects the expression of another. And what we're saying here is that the phenotype of some alleles is able to directly alter or mask the phenotype of a second gene's alleles. Remember for me that a phenotype is the physical appearance of a gene. That could be eye colour, fur colour, whether you have a particular disease such as cystic fibrosis. Remember that an allele is simply a form of a gene. So if you're looking at eye colour, for example, this would be the allele for brown eyes. This would be the allele for blue eyes. We're going to jump straight in by looking at an example. So there are two genes in mice that control fur colour. Genotypes uppercase A, uppercase A, or uppercase A, lowercase A, have black bands in their fur. So we're saying that these mice have black bands in their fur, which we call agouti. The lowercase a situation, so the homozygous recessive situation, means that they have solid black fur. So first of all, be aware that if you have capital A, capital A, capital A, lowercase a, you're going to have black banded fur. If you have the homozygous recessive lowercase a situation, you're going to have solid black fur. We're then told that gene B controls the expression of gene A. So whether the mice have black banded fur or solid black fur will be dictated by gene B. So the genotypes uppercase B, uppercase B, or uppercase B, lowercase B, will allow the expression of gene A, but if you have that homozygous recessive situation, you will not get the expression of gene A. And as a result, mice with the genotype lowercase B, lowercase B, will be white, and we call that albino. So if we look at some pictures to understand what's going on, first of all, we need to look at what's going on with gene B, because when we identify what's going on with gene B, we'll know what output of gene A we'll get, so we know that capital B, capital B, or capital B, lowercase b, will allow that expression of gene A. So we've got that situation there, which means we get the expression of gene A. And we've been told here that if we allow that expression of gene A, then the mice are going to have black bands in their fur, and that's called agouti. I know it's a bit confusing because it doesn't look very black, but we have our agouti mouse here. Now with gene B... Because again, we've been told here, these two genotypes will allow that expression of gene A. So we're allowing the expression of gene A, which in this situation is lowercase a, lowercase a. That means that we have a mouse with solid black fur, as shown here. Lastly, because we've got lowercase b, lowercase b, we will not allow the expression of gene A. So it doesn't actually matter whether that mice was supposed to have, in the case here, a gooty fur colouring, or in the case here solid black, quite simply, neither of these genotypes will be expressed, and that's because that lowercase b has masked the expression of those genotypes, and that's why we have our albino mouse. Now let's look at a cross. So we're looking at two offspring of an agouti AABB mouse, and we're crossing it with an albino mouse. So let's look at the situation. We know that we needed either a big B, small B, or big B, big B in order to allow the expression of the agouti genotype. So we've got our agouti mouse there. Obviously, all the gametes, sex cells produced, will be capital A, capital B. We have our white mouse, and remember, the only genotype which produces a white mouse will have lowercase a, lowercase a, lowercase b, lowercase b, because remember, that will mask the A allele. We know that all our gametes are therefore going to be small a, small b. So fundamentally, our F1 phenotype, the first lot of offspring, must all be agouti. Why? Because they have the capital B, lowercase b, which means we express the capital A, lowercase a, which remember, looking at above from our key, is the agouti colouring. It now gets more complicated if we look at the gamete combination produced. Remember that these genes are unlinked. We haven't been told that they're linked which means we get this combination where you can have one of four gamete combinations. Look at another video if you're unsure as to how I've done this. But now we're ready for our giant Punnett square in order to do the genetic cross. But just to remind you, 
if you have either capital B lowercase b or capital B capital B then no masking occurs so if you have either capital A capital A or capital A lowercase a you're going to have an agouti mouse what about if we had the homozygous recessive genotype with the capital B lowercase b or capital B capital B then you'd have your solid black mouse let's look at the final combination so if we have that homozygous recessive genotype we'd be masking our A gene so it doesn't actually matter what combination of A's you had you'd always end up with albino and let's just make sure that checks out as we look at the table so in our first cross AB by AB we end up with capital A capital A capital B capital B so Let's just double check. There's our capital B, capital B. There's our capital A, capital A. And look, we have a Gooty, which is shown by that tan colour. Moving on. Capital A, capital A, capital B, lowercase b. That's that situation. Again, pushing out a Gooty. Now let's double check this one. Capital A, capital A, lowercase b, lowercase b. So we're starting here. Lowercase b, lowercase b. Capital A, capital A, look, albino, right, it's white, it is albino. Let's check one of the black ones. So lowercase a, lowercase a, capital B, capital B. There's your capital B, capital B. There's your lowercase a. Look, solid black, it works. So let's look at our phenotype ratio. We have 9 to 3 to 4, agouti, black, albino. And you must be prepared to list all the different genotypes which account for them. So for example, for a Gooty, you can just pull them out of the table. So I'm just going along this top row here. I'm not going to do them all, it would take all day, but let's have a look at our blacks. So that's these three here. Let's look at our albinos. So it's these four here. So notice a 9 to 43 ratio is typical of, of a recessive epistasis. Remember, it is recessive because remember, it was only when we had this combination here that you mask that A gene. Recessive epistasis occurs when the presence of a recessive allele prevents the expression of another allele at a second locus. Remember, the locus is the position of a gene on a chromosome. You need to learn all of these definitions. Recessive epistasis gives the ratio 9 to 3 to 4 with a heterozygous cross. Other examples of recessive epistasis include the Labrador fur colour. Gene B determines whether black capital B or, or brown lowercase b lowercase b pigment is produced. Gene E determines if the pigment is deposited in the fur. Golden retrievers with lowercase e lowercase e do not have any pigment in their fur. So let's just work out what would be going on with these three dogs. So if we had either capital E lowercase e or capital E, capital E, we don't have any masking. And so then we can look at our B gene to work out what colour the dog would be. So if it was either big B, lowercase b, or big B, big B, we'd have a black dog. If you had lowercase b, lowercase b, you'd have a brown dog. You'd get masking if you had lowercase e, lowercase e, and so at this point, no pigmentation would be deposited. So it doesn't matter if you're big B, small B, big B, big B, or small B, small B, you'd end up with a white dog. Epistasis can also be dominant. Dominant epistasis is when a dominant allele at one locus completely masks the alleles at a second locus. You usually get a ratio of 12 to 3 to 1 with the heterozygous cross. And for example, the colour of the summer squash fruity is controlled by dominant epistasis. So the gene for white fruit is dominant and it masks the expression of the gene for yellow fruit and green fruit. So we'll look at a combination now. Let's make a note. So white fruit gene is dominant and it masks the gene for yellow fruit and the gene for green fruit. And so again, I like to show before I even look at the outcome, let's just work out what's going on. So if, because that white gene is dominant, if you have either of these allele combinations, it doesn't actually matter what's going on with the G allele. You're going to end up with a white fruit. 
it's only when you've got a lowercase, lowercase w situation, then you have no masking whatsoever. And at that point, the G will be expressed. So we know that if you have the dominant genotype, you're going to end up with yellow fruit. And if you have that homozygous recessive genotype, you're going to end up with green fruit. So let's have a look at a combination. So in this situation with the white fruit, we're picking out this combination here. They've just given us an example and it's producing the white fruit. Let's look at the yellow fruit now. We know that we must have that lowercase w situation in order to prevent the masking. And in this situation, we have capital G, capital G, which is producing our yellow fruit. Let's look at our gamete combinations. And then because every single one of the F1 has this combination of alleles, we know that that is uppercase W, lowercase W, uppercase G, lowercase G, and therefore we have white fruit. So now we're doing a huge cross. We know that there'll be lots of gamete combinations. I'm just going to prove to you why this works. So we'll randomly pull out this example here, capital W, lowercase w, capital G, lowercase g produces white fruit. Yes, we agree. Let's check this one here, lowercase w, lowercase w, capital G, capital G, yellow fruit. Yes, it's yellow. Now let's check the green one down here, lowercase w, lowercase w, lowercase g, lowercase g, green fruit. Yes, perfect. And so we have our phenotype ratio of 12 to 3 to 1 white, yellow, green. So that's an overview of epistasis. I'm going to now show you how it works in an exam setting. We're going to write lots of notes to ourselves to make sure we find it straightforward. So let's look at this past exam question now. In colour point Persian cats, interaction between two genes, B and B and D and D, causes colour of the face, ears, paws and tail. The dominant allele B gives a dark brown colour known as seal, the recessive allele B gives a light brown colour known as chocolate. The dominant allele D has no effect on coat colour. However, the presence of two copies of the recessive allele D changes the colour seal to blue and chocolate to lilac. So we know that we have an example of recessive epistasis here. State the name given to this type of genetic interaction. That is just epistasis. We know we're masking, so that's why it's epistasis. Suggest the possible genotypes of a seal colour point Persian cat. So now we're going to start making notes to ourselves. So we know that the dominant allele has no effect on coat colour. So we have no masking. And so if you have this combination or this combination, you're going to have a seal coloured cat. If you have this combination, then you're going to have a chocolate coloured cat. So when we're being asked in part two to suggest the possible genotypes of a seal colour point Persian cat, we just need to combine all of these in their various orders. So just make sure you don't miss any of them. So let's start with this combination here. Let's do the same, but now with that combination there. Now we can move on to look at that combination. And then lastly, this combination. And then just double check and make sure that they're all different. Which they are. And look, it came out as four, which is good. We only had four options. A lilac colour point Persian cat is homozygous at both the capital B lowercase b and capital D lowercase d gene locus. What is meant by the terms homozygous and gene locus? Okay, so homozygous means having two copies of the same allele. Gene locus, I've already mentioned, the position of a gene on a chromosome. A cross was carried out between a seal cat and a lilac Persian cat. A Punnett square of the expected genotypes of the offspring is shown in table 1.1. Use table 1.1 to state the phenotypes of the offspring and to predict the phenotypic ratio. So let's make some quick notes to ourselves. We know that lowercase, lowercase d leads to masking. So if you have a big B, big B, or big B, small b, then we know that seal colouring is going to change to blue. If we have small d, small d, and small b, small b, then we know we're going to get that masking again. So we're going to have chocolate changing to lilac. 
we don't get any masking if we have any of these combinations of alleles. And so as a result, those cats will stay being seal and the lowercase b cats will stay being chocolate. So I have to make these notes to myself in order to have me answer this question. So now we're ready to answer the question. Look, we have a big B, small b, big D, small d. So here and here. So I know that that first cat will be seal. Let's look at this cat now, big B, small b, small d, small d. So there's our small d, small d. Here's our big B, small b. So we know that our cat will be blue. Now we have small b, small b, big d, small d. Here and here, so we know that our cat is chocolate. And then lastly, homozygous recessive genotypes. And that is here, so we're going to have a lilac cat. In terms of our phenotypic ratio, it's just one to one to one to one. So that's the end of this video. I hope you see how important it is that you need to make these notes. It's like a little function machine. If you can match up your genotypes with a little flow chart like this that leads you through the answer, then you can see your answer. Just make sure that everything matches and that you're looking at the right combination of alleles.